Welcome to a CX Moment. My name is Roisin Hunt here with Zendesk and we are so glad you are with us today. So for anyone who is new to a CX Moment, these candid conversations are really an opportunity to hear insights and experiences from leaders navigating the world of support and hopefully giving you some practical nuggets of wisdom that you can take back to your own teams. In today's episode of a CX Moment, we are joined by our friends from Dutch Bros Coffee. We have Angie Veek, Senior Director of Customer Experience, and Sonia Martin, Senior Manager of Customer Success and Operations. We'll hear all about their approach to customer service and the love that they get from their customers. But before we dive into all of that, we would love to hear from you. So let us know in the chat or comments if you're joining on LinkedIn. We want to know what's most important for you when you're buying your favorite cup of coffee. Is it A, speed, B, friendly staff, or C, both? So let us know in the chat and comments what you think. Some people saying already that they love uh, Dutch Bros Coffee, and we do too. So you can ask questions in the chat today throughout our conversation. Uh, we want to bring this uh, these questions to Sonia and Angie and make this as interactive as possible for you all watching at home. All right, enough from me. Let's hear from Angie and Sonia. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. So glad you're here. So Angie, let's dive in. Let's start with you. Um, Dutch Bros Support Org started with your two founders as the original go-to agents who were meeting with everyone face to face, but evolved a little since then. So mm -hmm. tell us about that evolution and how your support org is structured today. Yeah. Well, so Travis and Dane Borsma, our co-founders, started Dutch Bros Coffee in 1992, and they started with one push cart, and they were serving customers downtown in this small Southern Oregon town. Uh, they knew everyone's drink, they knew their names, they knew their dog's name, and it was really all about just investing in the community and doing, and, you know, giving back. It was great music, and everyone was just having fun. And I would say today that same vibe exists across the country as we're expanding. And so the vision and those values that our co-founders set are the same today. Um, and we look to them as our original customer service agents. Um, they established what the values we follow. Um, and really Dane created these building blocks for customer service. And we still refer to them daily. And it's one of those things that all of our agents um, are, you know, they're aware of the importance of what our customers bring to the equation. It's really all about our customers. We work for our customers or we work for those that serve our customers. And so we want to be continue this fun, loving, mission centered, you know, um, company. And so really in 2013, when I first went to the HQ downtown, I saw one service agent and they were basically sitting on a huge speaker and music was blasting and the phone would ring maybe once or twice a day and they would talk to customers and they would you know answer their questions and it was just a really it was it was an interesting vibe I was like how can they even talk to to people with this music blaring and it was really that that's what we were about and um today we've grown obviously we're, we're a bigger company um and we have a different setup but I would say those same values exist and um, we just want to be this fun dynamic group but we want to be at this extension of the window also mm -hmm. and so what the Broistas do at the window is really magical and if we can support that and continue to give our customers that same experience that's really what it's all about and I'd say the evolution of customer service at Dutch was we were really heavy in that art of customer engagement, but we we didn't focus as much on the science. And we know there's a balance to that. And that's something that we're, we're incorporating and we have incorporated over the last several years of mixing that art of, and art and science. And so metrics and reporting and systems and strategy. And I, I'd say overall, really how we approach it is we understand we have amazing people and we have the right people and we want to mix that with our brand and our brand world knowledge of what do we do best and what do our customers want? 
Yeah. And I see in the comments that the mm. they, people want great coffee and they want friendly staff. And you already have a request for coffee, uh, Dutch Bros Coffee in New York. So you are very popular <laughs> around, around the country. And I love that you talk about the values being the driving force behind who is in your support work. And I want to move to Sonia because you, like many of the agents and people that work at HQ, like Angie mentioned, you started in the shop window as a broista. And that's what Angie mentioned, that being very indicative of the culture. But how does that impact then the support that your customers receive on the other end? Yeah, coming from the field, I was able to gain hands-on experience to just better understand how our shops operate from a field level. I gained so much knowledge about our customers, their behavior, our products, and the voice of the customer through human interaction and creating customers during my four years as a barista. Um, so I had the opportunity to serve our customers in the field by memorizing their names, their drink orders, and just getting to know them on a personal level. And still to this day, I have the opportunity to connect with some of my customers that I met years ago, and I get to see their kids grow up, updates on their life, and they get to reach out to me and just see me as I grow in my professional and personal career. Um, so when I transitioned to HQ, I started as a customer experience rep, and that was a fun time where we um, just launched Zendesk. We were working out of one inbox. There was about five support agents at the time, and we were answering phone calls on an actual <laughs> phone. Mm -hmm. um, so that was fun when it would round robin around and we would all kind of, who's going to answer it? Whose turn? Um, and then I spent some time in PR and then I made my way back to the customer experience team once I saw an opportunity to kick off the customer success team. Um, so throughout my experience from the field and then our support team, it's our culture is the same and our mission and what we're taught in the field is the same that we're taught at HQ. Mm -hmm. um, there's no gap and we embrace human connection, serving our customers and building relationships. So our support team is an extension of the window. Although we aren't serving our customers at the shop, we strive to do the same, provide them the same experience that they receive and just go above and beyond when possible. I love that. The, the, it's a seamless kind of experience in terms of the feeling. But how do you, let's get specific, how do you train others, you know, that transition from the shop to support? Have you formalized that process? in any way? Yeah, so we brought on a trainer last year and they work closely with our um, customer experience leadership and they do onboarding training for our internal and BPO team. So we have a formalized training program um, to make sure that if you are a support agent that's come from the field or you don't have any Dutch Bros experience, we're catering our training to fit your needs. If that's starting from the very beginning um, to understand our culture and our mission or just refreshing and touching on it just to enhance your knowledge about the company. Yeah. So really meeting the person where they're at and what they need to be successful. Definitely. I think our take on training is it's important to see that anyone can be taught what matters for us is finding the right people who want to be part of this team and want to serve our customers the way our support team does every day. Amazing. And then let's let's get into even more specifics. Angie, what are the types of interactions that your agents see? Like how many tickets are they typically seeing in a day or a month? What's coming through? Yeah, so we definitely get more than the one or two calls a day now. <laughs> we we have about 30,000 inquiries that we handle monthly. Um, and so those inquiries can be all types. We're a beverage company. Obviously, we have issues with experiences, the products, sometimes the people. Um, and But really, a lot of the questions are very central to the communities that we serve and how we show up and, and you know, how we resolve issues if there was a problem with the experience. And so really at the end of the day, we empower all of our agents to make it right, no matter what comes our way. And so those questions, we have one phone number that funnels to our entire team. So none of our shops have a phone number. So it's really busy. It's really dynamic. It's very interactive. And our customers 
will pick up the phone and call us and they talk to us and our agents again as the extension of the window we want to make sure that our raving fans maybe if they had less than the stellar experience we're going to make it right we you know we had a customer call the other day because a tornado warning was going to hit in one of our states and they wanted to shelter our broistas and help them and and care for them and so we have really amazing customers that care about the brand they care about our people um, we get hundreds of wedding invites and Sonia and I think we could probably be professional wedding crashers because we get so many loving, uh, you know, interactions with our customers. Um, you know, we, we do have complex issues also that take time and attention. So really knowing how we can support our operators and franchisees in the field is, is super important. And we always go back to our core values and, and focus on those resolutions that are they're actionable. And, um, you know, we take a tiered approach to that. We have a team of specialists that have sub, we have subject matter experts. We have liaisons to certain departments, to all of our departments at HQ. So it's really important for us to have people that not only understand the culture, but they are very good at what they do as far as being an expert in their area. So for us also something that changed that, that dynamic was that we did cross training for our entire team. So people can help each other out and they, and we, work out a slack and it that goes off all day long with people supporting each other. And it's just the same culture behind the scenes as it is hopefully for our customers to see. Well, Giselle made a comment that hyper-personalization and real human empathy equals real brand value. And I think that's a lot of what we're talking about today here. Um, and, you know, Sonia, you mentioned the BPO. So, you do work with a BPO. That was an intentional choice. But the way in which you work with it is slightly unique. So I'd love, Andy, if you could give us a little more information on that. How did you choose it? What's mm -hmm. made working together so successful and seamless for your teams and also for your customers? Yeah. So when we decided to bring on a BPO, it was it was really important that we had we we extended that culture to the BPO and we were looking for a partner you know, preferably in our own local communities that we could work with. So we're very community centered. So we actually had a BPO right in our own backyard here in Southern Oregon. And the minute we met with them, it was the right fit, the right culture. They had the similar values on how they approached uh, customer service. And so for us, really, it was a learning experience. We didn't know what we were doing. We treated the process like we would with any Dutch Bros employee. And we learned along the way. We brought experts in that, you know, again, know what they're doing and can help guide us. Zendesk was a, a great partner in that for us. Um, but we do the same type of, you know, structure um, for the BPO strategy. And I think, you know, we went from a team that had some turnover to a team that now has the highest engagement scores in our company and one of the highest scores. And so we used, you know, surveys and listening sessions for our managers to really hear what was happening on the front lines, because the solutions may not be what we think they are and the agents are going to know the best. So what we want is to really get that, those, those people that are hungry and they're humble and they're really people smart. And I'm quoting the ultimate team player by Patrick Lencioni. That's something that we really focus on in finding the right people for the job that we're, we're asking them to do. And, and we do a ton of work with employee engagement and how to build that culture internally with resilient agents that are thoughtful and grateful. And we hope that we're pouring back into them as much as they can, they're pouring into our customers. Yeah, so they're really exemplifying the brand, the brand values in every interaction. And so you've worked really hard to, to kind of reinforce that. Yeah. Um, and so uh, there's lots of questions coming into the chat and I want to shift gears a little bit to operations. So there's questions about, you know, AI. Um, but Sonia, when you first started in your role in customer success, you know, what were some of the first areas that you saw were priorities to kind of dig into? 
Yeah, we were doing a great job at providing quantitative insights um, regarding our customer feedback, but we wanted to expand on that and explore how can we look at it from a qualitative perspective to better understand our customers and identify areas of improvement. So we began utilizing tags and custom fields so our agents could tag our tickets um, so we could capture top trends we were seeing. And we also created triggers to auto tag based on keywords that we were looking at that pertain to our core values um, to take away some of that heavy lift from our support agents. We also brought on an analyst who was able to use our data to inform leaders in the field for coaching opportunities. Um, and then we did invest in a third party vendor to support our reporting needs. And throughout that process, we learned that the best way for us to filter our trends is leveraging Zendesk Explore and just capturing as much information we can from the ticket form to capture a high level glimpse of what our customers are telling us. Um, we also launched a knowledge base last year. So I had the honor of collaborating with our CE leadership to strategize on how we can provide our support agents with the tools they need to do their job efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, so our knowledge base is available for our internal and our BPO teams. Um, we include workflows, suggested macros, tags, best practices along with training materials, um, how-to guides and training videos. So we look at our knowledge base as a system um, being a community database that involves our entire team to work with our KB champions. We're constantly updating it, adding new content. Um, and it's just kind of like our one source of truth for all of our agents. Um, and we also include feedback from our BPO. So they're just as involved in the process as our internal team. So there's lots of questions in the chat. Um, and Karsten wants to know, Sonia, what is your favorite Zendesk feature or function? Because you mentioned a lot of the different items that you have, but if you had to pick one, what would it be? Yeah, I love the Knowledge Capture app, and I think I'm just giddy about Knowledge Base and kicking that off last year. I think it's really powerful that our agents in um, the workspace can get the information they need on the same ticket interface without having to leave the window. So they're not jumping from Slack, Google Docs, Sheets, emails to um, get information they need. It's all there in Zendesk for them. Awesome. And then the topic that's on everyone's minds, it's around customer support AI solutions. And there's a question from Roman came in. It's like, what do you, and this would be to both of you, what do you think of these customer support AI solutions? And, you know, where do you strike the balance? Where are the concerns around implementing this, especially when you're so focused on relationships like in at Dutch Bros? So let's start with you, Angie, and then we can go to Sonia. Yeah, that's, that's something that's definitely part of every consideration we make is that we don't want to change the experience. If anything, we want to enhance the experience. We want it to be an opportunity and potentially even a new, a new way that our customers can interact with us and, and potentially meet them where they're at. So we don't want to take away highly personalized interactions. We definitely want to just enhance them. And I think from our side, if it feels right from a brand perspective um, and it fits what our customers want, we're going to explore it. Awesome. Yeah. And then Sonia, what about you? Have you thought about AI in your in your mm -hmm. operations? Is it something you're looking at or considering? Yes, we are exploring automation currently. Um, Self-service can look different for everyone. So we're tapping into this space with an open mind and slow approach. And Angie said it perfectly. Our goal isn't to completely remove that human touch, but direct our customers to self-serve to the information they need, allowing our live agents to dive into those tickets that do need the human touch so they can spend more time taking care of those customers and working with the field to make sure that we can capture all the information we need to take care of our customers. Yeah, it's definitely a balance and it's not one that anyone has perfected. I think we're gonna see a lot of 
conversations around this in the coming years. But um, just to switch gears a little bit, because we are coming to the top of our time um, and we will try and get to some more questions. But there is something I want to speak to, Angie, when we spoke earlier, you talked about the importance of getting leadership on board to like further the growth and the impact of a support organization, mm -hmm. uh, just in terms of getting visibility, getting buy-in, getting drive. And you came at that from a very interesting approach. Can you share a little bit about how you approach that at Dutch Bros? Yeah, I think one of the things that makes Dutch Bros super special from an executive leadership uh, lens is that we're always looking for ways to design our future. And they're asking for us to really put um, that 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 idea into everything that we do. And so for us, we were a team that was more informed versus consulted. And I wanted to change that to be a, a that this team would really have a seat at the table. And so we tapped into our PR and comms agency, a, a partner that we've worked with for quite a while. And um, I actually came from PR at Dutch Bros before um, coming to the customer service side of the world. And so we created this KPI report that really highlighted our top metrics, but not didn't stop there. It wasn't just throwing you know, numbers at them. It was gaining really helpful insights and creating this integrated improvement plan. And we did audits and we really looked at taking what mattered from our metrics and putting it in a, in a really digestible way for others to see the value. And it, it really gave us that value center versus cost center um, notoriety. We, we started sharing that KPI report with our leaders. We did a cultural newsletter based on areas of interest from our leadership. So we would take what was important to them and provide our own twist to it. Um, and it was really something I think that definitely put us on the map um, with our KB project and really looking at some of the volume and what we were what we were seeing. Uh, all of the departments at HQ had a greater insight into just our what we were seeing on in our world. And we became it was kind of a demand. Then it was like, oh, wow, OK, this team has something that I think that would be helpful in the work that we do and, and helps us be actionable on our side also. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we did we did some town halls with the CEO and we really just, again, put our best foot forward there and, and, and put it all put it all out there. So it was great. Yeah. And Giselle had made a comment earlier, which seems to be a bit of a theme. If you can measure it, you can improve it. And just that being a great approach to, you know, any sort of work streams. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we, we talked about NPS and the satisfaction of agents as well as customers. Stephen mm -hmm. had a question, which might be for Sonia. Are you currently using Zendesk to handle internal desktop support requests as well as your external client queries? Yes, yeah, so we actually have two Zendesk instances. We have our HQ instance and then our CE instance. So we do have um, our more of internal comms on the HQ instance um, who can communicate with our employees, the field leadership on HR, IT, PR, any sort of requests. And then our CE side is all external facing communications to our customers. Awesome. And then somebody has just uh, put a nice comment in. Casey says, Dutch Bros is a favorite of mine. When I lived in Southern Oregon, I was a regular due to how well I was treated every time and how friendly they were. They do it right. And so you're doing something right. So let's continue. <laughs> Make sure to continue that. Your customers love you. Um, testimony from the wedding invites and all the customer love that you get. But we know that you're not stopping, right? So what is next for both of you this year? Like Sonia, where are you focusing? You're talking about knowledge bases, self-serve, you know, really um, streamlining processes and efficiencies. What is on your list for this year? 
Yeah, continuing to help the customer experience team evolve, um, just creating opportunities for our people to grow and feel confident with the proactive solutions that we're creating for them. And ultimately, just seeking to understand our support agents and their needs, um, and then also working closely with our partners who are supporting our initiatives and continuing to invest in technology and just overall enhance our operations as we learn from experience and other CX experts. And what was most successful last year as you're looking forward this year? Like what what worked the best for you last year? I would say just the company buy-in with our knowledge base and launching that. That was a heavy lift, just gathering so much information and how do we map it out? And on the back end, we can stay organized and on the front end, make sure that we have accurate information, buy-in from HQ, that we're working with other departments to make sure that we have the correct information to share with customers. I think that was a very exciting project to be part of um, because that took an army to complete. Yeah. And actually that leads to a question that um, Josie has about approaching escalations and multi-team issues. So is the work that you did last year helping with addressing this as an issue? Yeah, so our knowledge base is broken down by our tiered structure. So we have articles catered to our BPO and internal team, but then for our escalated teams, we have articles that also cater to them, giving them more detail and guidance on how to handle those situations where um, it needs that human touch, where we have experts on our support team that can connect with field leadership to make sure that we're understanding what the customer is telling us and how we appropriately handle situations. Yeah. So the work that you put in last year is helping helping streamline everything for this year. So good luck with everything that's on your plate for the next year. And then Angie, for you, what are you looking to do uh, this year that's going to have the most impact for your team? Yeah. So really what I'm focusing on is the three to five year strategic plan, living in the future and saying, what are, where do we want to be and how are we going to get there? So kind of being that next level where do we go from here <laughs> moment? That's where it's uncomfortable at times because there's so there's actually more questions than we have with than answers. But for me, it's just continuing to invest in the right people, giving them the tools and empowering them to do right by our customers, building out that customer love initiative we have, showcasing how our people are interacting with our customers because I think that is what we're all about. That is our brand. And um, just, you know, building systems, working with Sonia and making sure we are getting that art and that science right for what our brand wants to. I love that. The balance of art and science underpinned by a love of your customers and they will for sure love you back, as we saw in some of the comments today. People are really, really loving uh, Dutch Bros. Well, thank you both so much. We are at time. It went so fast. Yeah. I'm sorry we didn't get to all the questions, um, but thank you for sharing your time and your experience with us today, Angie and Sonia. We wish you all the best for your endeavors this coming year. Thank you. And thanks to you at home for sharing your time with us today. We really hope that you enjoyed this session. Denise has popped a lot of things in the chat. If we'd love to hear your thoughts, rate your experience of today's session, and we will choose three random respondents who will win a Dutch Bros gift card. Uh, we'll be back for a CX moment in April. Be sure to join us and also mark your calendars for Relate, Zendesk's flagship event with the latest and greatest product updates and our vision for the future of CX. Online May 10th and 11th. We'd love to see you there. Registration links for everything are in the chat. Until next time, take care and we'll see you again very soon.